So without further ado, let's welcome up Joel Bogus. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Your microphone's all of a sudden. Business with a podcast. Remember these things? Business without a podcast. Which one of those two situations would you rather be in? Obviously. Would you rather be smiling and dialing, hoping and praying that someone would not only pick up the phone but be willing to sit and listen? to what you have to say, or would you, be rather, would you rather be tapping into your own knowledge, your own wisdom, your own expertise of your business and your industry and talking with people who are eager to hear your solutions, to refer you to their friends, and to vote with their wallet? Well, the answer is obvious, right? Of course, we would rather be over here. Podcasting is one of the easiest and the fastest ways to develop a following, to build your to build a relationship, and to grow your business. And what I want to talk about today is how easy it is and some of the reasons that we should all have a podcast. And here's the good news. Podcasting has actually hit the mainstream media. Success Magazine, USA Today, the Wall Street Journal, they're all talking about podcasts and they're reporting it because they have seen the light and they realize that today's consumer, today's user listens to podcasts. They have them right here on their phone. And I'm going to talk about a little bit about how you can tap into that as well. And, you know, I can actually remember the day. I was 10 years old. It was Christmas Day. And it was the best time of the day that it could be, at least for me. And you know what it was time to do. It was time to open presents. And as soon as that happened, I rushed down the hall and grabbed the biggest box that I could find. And luckily for me, it had my name on it. And I opened this box. I pulled out this magical-looking silver-colored Rectangular looking box, a little bit better, bigger than a bread box. And it was my very first boom box. And from the time I turned that little switch on and heard that voice coming through the speakers, I knew that the audio spoken word was for me. I was hooked. And from that time on, that spark of passion became a flame, which later became a torch. And I actually started in traditional radio 25 years ago. I was also in front of the camera on television. And by the time podcasting started to kind of peek its head over the horizon, I knew that I absolutely had to be in that industry. So do me, fa do me a favor uh, real quick. Uh, hold your hands up and keep them up if you have a smartphone of some sort. doesn't matter what brand it is. If you have a smartphone. Okay, keep them up, keep them up, keep them up. Okay, okay. Why should your business have a podcast? Look around the room, folks. Accessibility. Every single person, you can put your hands down. Thank you for participating. Every single person in this room has access to your podcast. So let's multiply that. How big of a building is next to your office? You know, what city do you live in? What community do you live in? What state do you live in? Everyone has access to your podcast. And what you just saw, everyone raised their hand. 
in, uh, you don't have to, but when everybody raised their hand, I didn't have that opportunity available when I started podcasting way back in the day, but you do today. Because I don't know if you knew this, but Apple is, has made the podcasting app native on all the iPhones. You couldn't get rid of it even if you tried to. And that means that everyone walking out of an Apple store with a little white box, a little iPhone, that can not only be your next listener, but that can also be your next customer because not only do they get to listen on their own time, but this little device is also an ATM machine where they can push the purchase button at any time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Why should you have a podcast? Very simple, accessibility. Everyone can access your content. One of the top challenges, I think, for, for podcasters is to be visible, right? We all understand that. It is a noisy world out there. Every time we check our Twitter feeds, our Facebook feeds, we see someone pitching their stuff. We all see it. But if you develop a podcast, that's one way that you can learn to rise above the noise so that you and your message is seen, heard, and recognized. Let me give you a tip here on how to increase your visibility. A lot of times people ask me, well, gosh, I want to do a podcast, but what should I do a podcast on? I know what I know, but does anybody care about what I know? Here's how you can raise your visibility today when you get back to the office. You can write down the 10 most common questions that your target market asks you, and that can be your first 10 shows, your first 15 shows, your first 20 shows. That's how you can use podcasting to increase your visibility. And here's a, here's a smart, here's the cool thing. They don't even have to be questions that people ask you. They can just be questions that people commonly throw out on Facebook, on Twitter, in online forums, uh, in discussion groups. You can create shows with answers to those questions. In fact, I work with a coach, one of my very first podcasting coach, break character for a minute. I'm the poster boy for ADD, so kind of kind of bear with me here. He did, because I used to hit him with all kinds of uh, questions all over the place. And what he did was something very smart. He would refer to me the podcast that had the answer that I was looking for. And so he did two things with that. He nurtured our relationship by getting back in touch with me and also honoring his own time by giving me the answer that I needed in pre-recorded audio format. So we didn't have to spend 10 minutes, 15 minutes crafting an email, one email just for one person. And we've all, we've all done that. But when you record your answers, you don't have to do it. What you can do is just refer people to your website, sign them up for your newsletter, or put them in, in social media. So the second reason you should have a podcast is because it expands your visibility. And here's the very cool thing about growing your visibility is that when you share your knowledge, not only do you expand the visibility, but you grow your authority. And that's really where it is, right there, is you grow your authority because you become known as the go-to guy, the go-to gal, the person that knows more than other people, and the person that's sharing their knowledge. No strings attached, no expectation. You're just giving. You're giving. You're giving. And the law of reciprocity, it works every single time. It will eventually come back to you. And if you put in your podcast the right calls to action, kind of strategically place them in in your show, well, then all of a sudden you're going to see emails come back to you, tweets come your way, Facebook posts, and here's the cool thing. It might be people asking you other questions. You know, well, okay, I got that, but how about this? How about this? Here's what you can do. Instead of spending time answering it on Facebook, answering it in Twitter, answering it on Snapchat, you can say, that's a great question, John. You know what? I'm going to answer that on my next podcast. Why don't you subscribe and listen? And that is how you exponentiate that process. So John will, of course, subscribe. But you know what? John's going to tell all of his friends because you're going to say his name on the radio or, or on your podcast. Gosh, you might even have him in as, as a guest. Why should you have a podcast? 
Accessibility. Remember the hands? Visibility. Everyone's going to see you. Authority. You're going to be answering solution-specific questions for your audience. I uh, was in Nashville a couple of weeks ago and was celebrating the 48th anniversary of a couple of friends of ours and bumped into Dave Ramsey at the, uh, at the event. He and I share some, some common friends and I see him from time to time at different functions and, and such. And gosh, I should have asked this first. Does anyone in here besides me recognize the name Dave Ramsey? Please raise your hand. Please. Oh, thank goodness. I was a little worried about that. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But now, would it be fair to say that Dave is the authority, or at least one of them, in helping people get out of debt and experiencing uh, true financial freedom? Is that fair to say? A absolutely. Have you ever had a, a conversation with a Ramsey follower, and maybe you were offering them an alternate uh, way of getting out of debt or some kind of solution that was outside of Dave's uh, advice? Okay, okay. You know what? They, Ramsey followers, you can vouch for me on this, will defend him like he's a blood family relative, right? They will defend him because he has loyalty. And guess what? When you become a podcast host and you start hosting your own show, sharing your own wisdom, knowledge, expertise of your own business, You're, this is your own stuff. You already know this. People are not only going to see you as an authority figure, but they're also going to be loyal and just like my friend Dave does, people are going to start standing behind you. And they're going to start talking about, okay, this is what John said. This is what Jim said. This is what Chris said. Or this is even better. Let me check and let me see what Chris says. Let me see what Michelle says. L let me see what the, the true authorities have to say about this. La last reason, and, and this is pretty simple, uh, friends, the reason that we're all here today is the fifth reason that we should have a podcast, and that is to make a profit, and, and that's why we're here. And today, there's no easier way, I've said this at the beginning of the talk, to build that audience, to grow your exposure, and to make opportunities, purchasing opportunities for people where it makes sense. And I've been doing my current podcast, uh, Relaunch, for uh, going on two years now. And just recently, we passed a million downloads. And uh, at the end, how's this for crazy? At the end of last year, 2015, we were actually mentioned in Huffington Post, which is what Coy um, mentioned earlier. And then uh, Inc. Magazine on their website, I think he mentioned this too, they actually uh, gave us love right there. And I don't even know anybody that works for Inc. I, I do now, absolutely, but I didn't at the first time. And when you have that podcast and you have some mentions, like on Huff and in other places, well, it's great because you can then start tweeting that out and tweeting that out and putting that in your rotation. More credibility, more authority, more visibility, more everything that you need. And here's what's cool, and I haven't said this before, but when you know your stuff and everyone in here knows their stuff, and when you're not afraid to share your stuff, your tribe is going to come and they're going to find you. They're going to Google search, gosh, how do I do this thing? You know, how do I lose 25 pounds? How do I um, create a better relationship with, with my spouse? How do I increase my sales? You know, how do I master this thing called social media? When they start looking you up and you've got the top 10 reasons for this, or the top 10 reasons for that is your podcast, they're going to come to you every single time because you're going to make it real easy for, for people to find you. And it, it's, it's in the way you structure your podcast. It's in the way you write your show notes. That's just the blog article that accompanies all the episodes that you're going to put out. And in the way you market your podcast. Profitability. We've had the opportunity of working with some huge... Uh, brands, uh, Heil Microphone, you know, one of those brands, and big names too, and that opportunity never would have came to us had we not have done well with our show. You know, we were in business, so I was kind of moving at a snail's pace, and then we decided to launch a podcast and launch it right, 
And not overnight, please don't get that, but eventually people started coming to us. They started finding, finding out who we were and, and what we were all about. And now people are asking us to, will you help me? Because we, we did well with, with our show. The show is not the business model. That's a mistake that a lot of podcasters make. They think, well, I'll turn on the microphone, and then all of a sudden, truckloads full of money will start backing up to my front door, and you know, I've been doing this for a long time. That still hasn't happened for me yet, but I'm still praying. <laughs> but once you understand that your podcast is a tool inside your, your business model, it, it's not the wheel, but it's the accelerator. It'll help it spin. Once, once you realize that, that's when you're able to really understand how to position it, and then the opportunities uh, will come to you. I want to take a few questions. Uh, I know podcasting is the hot thing uh, these days, and the reason that I'm here is not to hear myself talk, but actually to hear you talk, and I try to give as much value as possible. Yes, sir, Jim. Which what, sir? As an audio host? Okay. Uh, I use Libsyn. Pers per uh, Libsyn is L-I-B-S-Y-N dot com. And that is my audio host. And we've used them, and I've recommended them for every single one of my clients, uh, including guys like Bob Berg, you might recognize that name. Uh, Michael Port, you might recognize that name. And Heil, I've, I've mentioned that already. Um, uh, good question. But... Uh, he asked about audio hosts. When you record your audio, you're going to need a, some, some parking place, a place to put it so people can access the file. And one of the things that you'll need is, is an audio host. Uh, Libsyn is by far the biggest and, in my personal opinion, the best. I can hook you up with exactly who to talk to at Libsyn if you're interested in that. Uh, Blueberry is another one, and uh, Podbeam is another one. Uh, th there are many out there, but um, I recommend Libsyn. So thank you for that. Who else can I help here? Joel, okay, very good. Joel, I have a question for you. I'm yes, the mic runner, but I actually have a question. <laughs> Michelle Baker here. Hi. Um, I wanted to ask you, you mentioned earlier that there was the top 10 reasons, and then you said you launched your podcast, but you did it right. So can you give a recommendation on what doing it right would look like? Or yes. say, for instance, I have a top 10 reasons right now how soon should I be looking at launching a podcast after having heard you speak today? Okay, fantastic. That's a great question. Thank you for that. I interviewed uh, Pat Flynn uh, on my show a couple of times. People may recognize that name. He's a smart passive income guy, and he is huge in, in the blogging community. And one of the things that he said on my show is if he could do it all over again, starting from scratch, leaving corporate America, he would start his podcast first before he started his blog because it's easy to, to gather people on their phones. Even if people don't have an iPhone, Google Play is now here, and it's free and available to Droid, to Galaxy, to all the other brands that you can absolutely think of. And podcasting equipment is being installed in cars now. Do you realize how huge that is for podcasters? To answer your question, you can still today be a pioneer in the podcasting market. The time frame for doing it right is somewhere between two and four months, depending on how much time we, we can actually take. Some people need to launch their podcast on a side hustle. Some people have the opportunity and the resources to where they can develop or devote that full time uh, to it. So it just really depends. But a, a ramp of about two to four weeks is enough time to get your audio hosting account set up at Libsyn and to, to do everything that needs to be done before you launch the podcast. And that's what you want to do because you want to launch strong. And that's one of the things that Relaunch did. Re Relaunch is not my first show. It's actually my ninth show. So what that means is we've done a lot of learning before we got to show number nine. But once we decided to launch, relaunch, 
we were able to fire on every single cylinder. And we hit our first number one on iTunes 12 days after our initial day and for repeatedly uh, throughout. And I say that not to impress you, but to impress upon you that with the right plan, the right strategy, you can get at the top of the chart, you know, above Shaq, above James Altucher, above the Dave Ramsey show, and really make that, take that place. You know, iTunes changes their rankings a lot. So you're, you're going to get those opportunities, just, just like I got those opportunities. I've got a, on, a, on an email that I send out, it's got, it's got my number one rankings when I hit number one, and then it's got me and then Tim Ferriss. Not Tim Ferriss and then Joel, but it's got Joel and Tim Ferriss. So I, I like to get that on social media every once in a while just, just for fun. Did I answer your question? Yes, you did. Thank you so much. You're, you're very well. We have another one for you if you want to take another one. Uh, sure. Oh, so this question is actually from Azim on the live stream. And, and you're kind of getting to this uh, with the last question. But how do you really tap into the search engine and make your podcast easily searchable? The question was, how do you make your podcast searchable? Well, how do you help the search engines find it? Sure. Uh, you you want to research uh, the, the right keywords to use. Keywords, remember that. Keywords are everything in, in the online world. And I use SEO book, seobook.com, to research all of my keywords. And that's how we, we write blog articles. That's how we write show notes. If you look at relaunch on your, your iPhone or your smartphone, it'll say relaunch dash, starting over with confidence. And the reason we use starting over is because starting over is a keyword. People type in starting over in Google, and they type in confidence in Google. So it's going to be to my benefit, and it'll be to yours too, to use words in your title that are, that are search friendly, which is exactly what we do. So my immediate advice would be use an, an, um, a keyword research tool, SEO book is what we use, and just find out the, the words that are, that are searched, and that's a free service. I hope that helped. All right, who, whom else can I help? Yes, sir. That's a good one. That was a good one. Yes. Thank you. Oh, great question. What, what he's talking about is I uh, did my show... Uh, with a Sean Smith, and Sean is a missionary, and he travels all over the world to remote areas, and he does his podcasting on his iPhone with a little mic that he plugs in, just like you would plug in your earbuds, and you can actually do, do that. He has his entire podcasting studio in a backpack for, for traveling purposes, and was your question, what, what do I use, or... Or, or just what do you recommend? Okay, fantastic. What would you Fan recommend fantastic. for somebody trying to get started, maybe without having to have you know, expenses that are a little too high? What I would do is I would buy two dynamic microphones on Amazon. Make sure they're dynamic. Dynamic, you see how I'm on top of this microphone? That's what a dynamic mic does. That means you don't hold it over here on top. You have to be up on it. Uh, if you get a condenser mic, a condenser mic, uh, that'll capture the surrounding uh, sounds. So you'll hear the dog barking in the background and things of that nature. But you want, you want to get a dynamic mic, and you can get a USB dynamic mic, um, an Audio-Technica ATR, an ATR2100 that plugs into the USB on your laptop. And then you can just record off of Skype using one of the uh, recording uh, softwares. One of my clients does that. And if you want to spend a little bit more, you can buy an external recorder to plug into your laptop. But just connect with me offline. And I can just send you the, the list of what we have. We, we've been doing it for a long time, so we're, we're, we're pretty um, high-end right. uh, these days. But we didn't start that way. My, my very first podcast, please don't go home and look this up, but my very first podcast was done on a video, not even a video conferencing, but, but a go-to-meeting type thing. It was two people on a phone, and it sounds exactly like that. And, uh, but you had to start somewhere. Awesome. Thank you so much, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. Oh.